Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Sabine and I have a book buying problem. <laughs> if you have been following me for a little while, you know that my TBR has been out of hand pretty much ever since I started booktube and it hasn't been shrinking ever since. So if you haven't seen my Yuck and London vlog already, like what are you doing over here? You need to check it out, honestly. <laughs> I'm really proud of what kind of video I created with how little footage that I had because I suck at vlogging. <laughs> so yeah, definitely check that out if you haven't. It's so much fun and you see my whole adventurous trip in London, meeting all of my online friends that I have been talking to for over two years and buying 15 books. There were some really amazing deals at Yelp because that has saved me a lot of coin that I can spend on more wise things such as groceries and rent. But who would like to spend money in that way you can spend it on books? Let's just get started with the book haul, shall we? So let's just start with the top of the pile and that is Sorrow and Bliss by Mac Mason. The thing is, if you've watched my latest vlog, A Productive Day in My Life, I told you about some fun personal news and that is that I am currently also working working at one of the most beautiful bookstores here in the Netherlands. Maybe I'm biased, maybe I'm not, but I'm working at Bruce in Utrecht. I've been working there for a month and I have seen this book over the cash register so many times right now that it really intrigued me. It has also, I think, won the Women's Prize for Fiction of 2022. The thing is, I can be quite depressed myself sometimes and I don't know why I keep on buying books about other depressed women trying to figure out their life. It's, it's not super helpful. <laughs> But I do want to read about it apparently because I have a very, very strong feeling that our main character, Martha Friel, has depression. She's clever and beautiful, a brilliant writer who has been loved every day of her adult life by one man, her husband, Patrick. So why is everything broken? Girl, same. <laughs> maybe Martha is just someone who finds it harder to be alive than most people, or maybe she has long believed there is something wrong with her. Forced to return to her childhood home to live with her dysfunctional bohemian parents, but without the help of her devoted foul-mouthed sister, Ingrid. Martha has one less chance to find out whether a life is ever too broken to fix or whether maybe by starting over, she will get to write a better ending for herself. I actually started reading this in the park when we had some free time during our trip, but I feel like I'm just not in the right mental health space to read this right now. I need some escapism and reading about someone who has like depression is not really helping that, but I do believe that it's gonna be such a beautiful book to read. When I bought this at Waterstones, the person behind the cash register was like, go get yourself some tissues. So I'm gonna do that in preparation whilst I'll be reading this book, hopefully soon-ish. You all probably know that I'm quite bad at finishing series, starting them pretty okay. You know, it's just one book, but continuing on with them is a commitment that I seem to not be able to make. Still, I bought Thunderbird by Neil Schusterman. I read Scythe in preparation to get my book signed by him, which I didn't because Yelk was kind of like organized quite shitty. I didn't get my book signed, but I really enjoyed Scythe, which is like a dystopian novel about a world where people cannot die, but there are Scythes, which are like trained killers. They decide who dies and who doesn't. And then our two main characters, Citra and Rowan, are going to be like introduced into the scythe dumb. But the thing is they find out that the one who becomes the scythe will have to glean the other. It's a whole world full of like corruption and just like the whole practicalities of people not being able to die was actually so interesting and so fun to read about because all of a sudden your grandma could have like three husbands, she could have more children who would be your uncle and aunts, but they would be younger than you are. It fascinated me. So when I saw this at Waterstones as well, I was like, Sabine, pull through with it. So I think that this is gonna be my next read. I just need to power through this series because I think it's gonna be really cool. It doesn't shy away from plot twists, from intense moments and from violence, which I actually quite like in books. And I need that type of escapism right now, like I said. This is a very random pile of books, but at the end of Yalk, I thought I had bought all the books that I wanted until I saw Golden Boys by Phil Stamper. At Brusa, I saw this book multiple times and it really, really spoke to me. It is a about a queer friend group who has to like spend the summer apart and really getting to know themselves. That's all that I needed to know in order for me to like pick up this book. The deal at Yelp was just too good and I couldn't get it for cheaper at my work. Plus I've heard great things about it. I even think it's becoming really like TikTok popular. So I have to try to give in to that hype, you know? I'm also slowly getting on that thriller murder mystery bandwagon and Jody. 
Jodi, I love you so much. She saw this book at Waterstones. It is In My Dream, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. And she sold me when she said it's like a dark academia. One of the friend group gets killed. The other have to figure out what happened. She just sold me on that and was like, I really want to buddy read this with you. So I was like, put it in my cart, honey. Six friends, one college reunion, one unsolved murder. Do I need to say more? I think Books and Lala also love this book, adored it. And I've just heard so many great things and I really wanna get into that thriller vibe. And maybe I should make a thriller type of video. I wanna make more reading vlogs again that have a theme. So maybe reading booktube's best thrillers? Could be an idea for like the fall Halloween spooky times. One of my favorite authors is also Holly Bourne. She has written the Am I Normal Yet trilogy and many other standalone books that I have really, really enjoyed. And she does not only write young adult fiction, she also writes adult fiction. And I didn't have pretending yet by her. I love how Holly Bourne writes about very important topics in society and feminism, and I have heard great things about this adult fiction by her. He said he was looking for a partner in crime, which everyone knows is shorthand for a woman who isn't real. April hates men. We can all relate. <laughs> how entitled and arrogant and cruel they are. She particularly hates being rejected by them after she's gone to so much effort to put herself out there. So when April meets Joshua, she vows that this time things are going to be different because this time April is pretending to be Gretel, the perfect woman, the kind that any man would fall in love with. Gretel is going to lure Joshua in and then she's going to make him regret it. But are all men really the problem? Is being Gretel really the answer? And how long can April keep pretending to be someone she's not? I mean, <laughs> it kind of sounds a little bit problematic pretending to be someone else, but also this could be a very fun, eventful book if it's worked out well. Her books until so far sometimes have endings that you do not expect the book to like go into that direction because it has happened so many times in fiction that you're like, oh my gosh, refreshing. So I hope that that will happen with this book as well. Honestly, the next book that I'm gonna show you is mostly a cover buy, but I've seen so many great reviews on Instagram of this book and that is Hurricane Summer by Asha Bromfield. I know Asha Bromfield is like an actress, but I don't think I've seen anything by her, but this sounds like a beautiful emotional coming of age story. Our main character Tilla really wants her father to love her, but every single summer her father returns to their home, which is the island of Jamaica. Tilla's mother actually tells her that she'll be spending the summer at Jamaica too, and she's kind of like dreading to go there. She's really dreading to see her father, but she's also really curious to see what brings him to Jamaica every single year. And on Jamaica, she will learn all of the dark secrets in her life, but there's also actually like a real life hurricane, like a storm coming their way. It is a coming of age story that deals with themes such as colorism, classism, young love, and the father-daughter dynamic. Next up, I have book two and three in a series and I haven't even started book one. I know, why am I doing this to myself? I am asking the same questions, honestly. These books were three pounds each. How could I pass up on that deal? You tell me. So I have book two and book three in the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy. I have that book at home, back home home with my parents and um, Good Girl, Bad Blood is book two and As Good As Dead is book three. I've heard that these like YA murder mystery thrillers are so bingeable and that you just keep on wanting to read them. So, you know, I just had to buy them in order to prepare myself that if I read book one, I can immediately continue on with book two and three because I will absolutely do that. Liar. <laughs> at some tables at Yelp, they also had deals as like three books for 10 pounds, or I think even on the last day, four bucks for 10 pounds, but I didn't want to buy four. But luckily some of the girls, we just kind of like bought the books together and kind of like shared the costs. So Leora, she bought, I think it was The Dragon Republic and The Burning God. And then I got a third book as well, which is Plain Bed Heroines. And she also really, really enjoyed this story. I think honestly, I'm on a murder mystery kick because this is, I believe, a a YA murder mystery that takes place at like a boarding school. It has a lot of like sapphic romances and relationships in it. So at this like private school, it's called Brookhands School for Girls. That school is actually an infamous site of a series of tragic deaths over a hundred years ago and is soon to be the subject of a controversial horror movie about the rumored Brookhands curse. I'm not too sure, but I believe you kind of like jump in time between during the 1900s where these two students, Flo and Clara, fell madly in love, but they were actually found 
dead. And now there's like a movie being made about it. I think I talked to Lexi Alexandra Roslin here on YouTube about this book and she told me that she really quite enjoyed it, but it wasn't as much like trying to figure out that murder in the past, but mostly focusing on the making of the film in the now, in the present. So knowing that I can kind of like go into that with that information. It is a super chunky book. I think it's over 600 pages long. It also has, if I can find it, some illustrations throughout the book. Of course, now you can barely see any of them. <laughs> but you know, getting like those murderous dark academia vibes and that's what I'm here for. I did get one of my books signed by my favorite author. And I think some of you may know her. I have two books that I bought. Let's start with the, the least exciting of the two, which is still exciting. And that is Stay Another Day by Juno Dawson. This is a Christmas themed contemporary with lots of family drama. So it, it's early for Christmas, I know, but I'm 100% sure that when the time comes around, I wanna pick up this book and I got some discounts. So <laughs> that's why I got it. Apparently this family has a ton of secrets and they are about to spill during Christmas time. I love how Juno Dawson often deals with super heavy mental health, societal subjects, and she deals with it in such a raw and well thought out way. I truly think that every single time that you will read one of her books, your feelings will get hurt or you will be like rooting for the characters and asking yourself multiple times, why the hell are you making this decision? But it feels really real. And that's what I love about her work. So saving this for Christmas, but her actual news release, I think it's coming out in two days at the time that I'm filming this on July 22nd. That is Her Majesty's Royal Coven. I think until so far, Juno Dawson has written like only contemporaries and this is her first fantasy. I even believe it's adult, but don't quote me on that. So I got this book signed by her. She was absolutely so lovely and she complimented me on my nails. We had a cute short conversation. So I have a little bookmark and a card with the characters on it. And she signed it to Sabine, her majesty greet you. Thank you so much, Juno. I mean, do I know what this book is about? No. Do I know it's from Juno Dawson? Yes. Does that make me want to read it? Absolutely. <laughs> I really feel with all the books that I've bought until so far that I'm in this like magical society, boarding school type of ideas. And this one also belongs in that category. Hidden Among Us is a secret coven of witches. Known as Her Majesty's Royal Coven, they protect crown and country from magical forces and other worldly evil. But their greatest enemy will come from within. There are whisperings of a prophecy that will bring the coven to its knees and four best friends are about to be caught at the center. Will Helena, Niamh, Leonie, and Elle be able to stop the prophecy before it's too late? Or will the differences that have seen them grow apart since childhood be too great to overcome. Life as a modern witch will never be simple, but now it's about to get apocalyptic. Okay, yeah, it says here, Prepare to be Bewitched by Juno Dawson's first adult series, a story of ancient prophecies and modern dating of sacred sisterhood and demonic frenemies. And she told me when I stood at her table and we were having this little conversation, she was like, this gets spicy at moments you least expected. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. It also has to deal with like the struggles of being, I think, a woman in modern society and lots of sapphic relationships, if I am correct. <laughs> I mean, it's Juno Dawson. I, I just have to read it. And I've heard really good things about this book as well. I think Cody from Cody's Book Corner was like, it's really good. Cody, if you didn't say that, I'm sorry that I'm misquoting you right now. <laughs> I had never heard of the next book, but Jody sold me on this one. And that is Idol by Louise O'Neill. And this one is actually signed. It was at Waterstones. Look, it has a little signature. And our main character is actually an influencer, which I think you rarely read in books these days because it's like a very upcoming kind of like job and topic to write about. We follow our main character, Samantha Miller. She has millions of followers and actually her new book is coming out and her career is going so well. She has also just written an essay about her sexual awakening with one of her best female friends, which actually goes viral. And after that moment, her best friend with whom she had this sexual awakening kind of like speaks out and tells our main character that the event was completely different in her eyes. In her memory, namely, that night was way, way darker. So basically in this book, it is Sam's word against Lisa's. And it's kind of like, who gets to tell the story? What is the truth? And it really intrigued me because it fits so well with like our current society, kind of like controversy and how things maybe are worded in the press. I'm just saying some things. This is kind of like the idea that I'm getting from this book. And honestly, the main thing why I wanted to buy is, is because Juno Dawson quoted it on the back. 
I am obsessed with Juno Dawson. <laughs> Next, I have a giant brick of a book that quite some of my friends have been reading and Leora sold me on this book and why I wanted to pick it up. And that is Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Miro. I think that this is a very recent release and a thick boy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I definitely have a theme about like a secret institution for magical children at the end of the 19th century. It is 1882, north of Edinburgh, on the edge of an isolated loch lies an institution of crumbling stone where a strange doctor collects orphans with unusual abilities. I already love this. And in London, two children with such powers are hunted by a figure of darkness, a man made of smoke. Charlie Ovid discovers a gift for healing himself through a brutal upbringing in Mississippi, while Marlowe, a foundling from a railway fright, glows with a strange bluish light. When two grizzled detectives are recruited to escort them north to safety, they are confronted by a sinister, dangerous force that threatens to upend the world as they know it. What follows is a journey from the gaslit streets of London to the lochs of Scotland, where other gifted children, the Talons, have been gathered at Cairndill Institute, if I'm saying that correctly, and the realms of the dead and the living collide. As secrets within the Institute unfurl, Marlowe, Charlie, and the rest of the Talons will discover the truth about their ability and the nature of the force that is stalking them. That the worst monsters sometimes come bearing the sweetest gifts. Leora said it was quite gruesome and violent, and I'm all here for that. In fiction, okay? In fiction. Plus, the cover is absolutely gorgeous, and it's giving off really like magical, dark vibes, and I'm really looking forward to experiencing this adventure. The pile is getting like so heavy and unstable. I am scared it's gonna fall over, but I have two more books left. Ooh, I'm really excited to read this during like Halloween, maybe even soonish because it intrigues me so much. And that is Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. I think it's our main character whose wife returns from like an undersea mission from like, how do you call that? Like an underwater vessel? Why can I not come up with the English name for it? But when her wife returns, she just doesn't seem like herself anymore. What happened on the bottom of the sea? She has brought it with her on the land. Her memories start to fade and just like their whole relationship doesn't really feel like their whole relationship anymore. And I think in this book, he will try to like figure out what happened at the bottom of the ocean. I think it's horror, but I'm not too sure. It just looks creepy. It sounds creepy and I'm all here for it. I wanna read this like ASAP and make like a dedicated reading vlog to it. Should I do that? Let me know in the comments. So now I finally have the last book. I have one minute left to film on my camera. So let's talk about it very quickly. And that is The Box in the Woods by Maureen Johnson. It's signed by the author. It was literally five pounds for a hardback. And I... Hmm. Same story. I read books one and two in this series. Book three wasn't released yet. It was gonna take a couple of months. So I forgot a lot of the plot of books one and two. So now I really want to reread that finished the, I think, first part of the series, the first three books. I have no clue what this is about. I don't wanna know because I feel like it's gonna be a spoiler for the first three because I'm unsure whether it's like an actual continuation, whether it's gonna be like a, a quartet or even more books in a series, or if it's kind of like a sequel to the first trilogy, if that's making any sense. Again, boarding school, someone gets murdered, a killer from the past returns with a mysterious letter. You jump in time between the 1900s and the now, trying to solve murders from the past and the present at this really amazing boarding school with a ton of characters. I love the first two books. Cannot wait to give them a reread and to continue on with the series. I am honestly a broken record with saying stuff like that. <laughs> so yeah, that was my 15 book book haul. A whole stack from Yelk and London. I'm so happy with all of them. Now I have to like find space for these books on my shelf. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. Let me know if I should pick up one of these books really, really soon. Let me know your opinions because maybe you can persuade me to pick them up sooner than I would have otherwise. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.